Hi. Hey. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you can see me. I can see me now, so that's a good thing, I think. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for your patience again and getting this live stream up and running today. As always, the technical things, my goodness, but I'm here. And I'm looking forward to having, what, the next hour and a half for some creative downtime or uptime, depending on the way you look at it. I'm looking forward to having an hour and a half of live streaming here with you on Facebook and later on, of course, archived on Facebook. And then later on, even again, on YouTube. Thanks so much to everyone who is watching, whenever you are watching, however you are watching. It's so good to have you here with me. Now, if you are new to this whole living room live stream stuff, hi, my name's Mary. Uh, <laughs> I'm here on behalf of the Living Room Community Art Studio. And every Wednesday, I'm here at from 2 to 3.30 p.m. making art, hanging out. You are welcome to make art with me if you like. You don't have to make what I'm making, but you're more than welcome. Hello, hey, Joe. You're more than welcome to just create whatever you want or need to create. Something that helps you feel good, something that maybe makes you feel better. Perhaps it's about creating something else for yourself. Hello, Wendy. Maybe it's about creating... Oh, I don't know, working on some things to make your life easier. <laughs> Joe just saying there, mm, hello, Mary, my favorite day of the week. Well, isn't that lovely? Thank you. <laughs> Wednesday is a, a pretty okay day, isn't it? It's an interesting day. You know what? We can come back to that conversation after. The days of the week and the significance they have for us. But just getting back to this and how you folks can make yourself at home here, especially if you're new to participating in these live streams, you can make art but you don't have to. If all you want to do, if all you feel up to doing is watching or listening, almost like we're a podcast, that's okay. You're still contributing to the creative energy and we enjoy knowing that you're out there absorbing that energy and perhaps, uh, you never know, it might inspire you later on in the week, on Thursday or Friday or whenever, and you might decide to take some time for yourself to create, give yourself that permission to make a little bit of art whatever kind of art it is you want to make. Hello, Amanda, so good to see you. Well, I see you in my head, but it's so good to know you're out there. Thank you for being here with us. And folks, you don't have to spend the whole hour and a half with us. If you can only spend a few minutes here and there, dip in, dip out, maybe you have an appointment, maybe you have some errands to run, maybe you just wanna go outside and like right now for us here in Oshawa, what, it's June, I can't remember what day it is, June 8th, June 9th, June 10th, hello, Nicole. Uh, it's a beautiful day outside, super sunny and hot. Uh, maybe you wanna get outside and enjoy some of that sunshine. I'm not gonna hold that against you. I'm not the boss of you. It's gorgeous out there. However you'd like to use this time, you're encouraged to do that and do so and just you know be a part of our community, be a part of our art hive moment here, our virtual art hive moment in whatever way feels best to you. Okay, we ask folks to be respectful of one another uh, in the comments and even as you're listening at home, even if you're not doing much of anything, you know, just to imagine other people complexly as John Green might say, and be kind to yourselves, be kind, just as you'd be kind to other people, negotiate consent, all of those things. If you have questions, ask. If you're curious about something, uh, perhaps maybe one of the people in our live stream, feel free to talk to them, to message them and see what you can learn about what they were talking about. Again, if we stumble, hello there. So I have here, <laughs> Fredly Sebastian, it's good to see you here. Thank you for being here. It's so great when people say hello. When you do say hello in the con and the, the comments, um, that's how I know you're here. Of course, you don't need to say hello. You can just be invisible wherever you're at. That's okay as well. I totally get it. Sometimes putting yourself out there and saying hi in the comments can seem a little vulnerable, but I always enjoy seeing who's out there learning about what you're working on, what you're creating, maybe meeting you for the very first time. And there are folks out there perhaps that we are joining the live stream for the first time, and that's amazing. Feel free to let me know who you are, what you're working on, what kind of creative energy fills your days, or perhaps the kind of creative energy you want to fill your days. That's how we learn about one another, that's how we create community, and now of course, it's a global community because we're online right now and we can connect and create with one another in so many amazing new ways. Oh, and Joe's saying hello to everybody here. So that not that lovely? Yeah, we do have a pretty cool com creative community here. And yeah, I'm just grateful to be here. Thank you, everyone. So I guess on that note, how are folks doing? 
how are people doing? What are you working on? How are you enjoying this time? How are you processing the really interesting and often difficult things that are going on in the world that we're all trying to work with? If we can use art or creative self-expression to help us do that, that's a lovely thing. I know last week in the live stream, I was processing some stuff when I was working on that piece all about digging and it was a beautiful piece in the end for me, but it came from a kind of difficult place. And that's one of the things I love about art, how beautiful things, uh, potentially transforming things, whether they're transformational for us or perhaps hopefully for other people in our lives, they don't always come from really pretty beautiful ideas. Sometimes they come from examining really complicated stuff that we want to change in ourselves and in the world around us, things that need to be acknowledged and dealt with, dare I say reconciled. This is a great opportunity. We're in an interesting time right now where we all have opportunities to do whatever we can to examine and change ourselves. And of course, that's a part of the art hive thing too, isn't it? The art of humaning how we create or recreate ourselves, how we honor one another as we go along that journey. What a wonderful journey to be on, huh? Yeah, so today, let's see, what am I working on today? Well, let's start with a warm up. I think I need a bit of a warm up to help ground myself, but I'm not sure what. I know uh, in, the, in the description that I posted earlier, I'm really thinking about intentions and what we do with intentions, how we set intentions, how we recognize what intentions we want to set for ourselves. And for me, for a long time, uh, if I'm very busy, I have this habit. I don't know if anyone else has this habit out there. And oh, Nicole's giving us an update. I'll put a pin in that very deep thought I was having. Nicole says, happy strawberry rhubarb pie day, everyone. So of course, Nicole, if for anyone who's been watching with us for a long time, Nicole keeps us up to date about the day it is, every Wednesday. Of course, every day of the year is something exciting, something interesting to celebrate. Today is Happy Strawberry Rhubarb Pie Day. So if you're out there and you like strawberries and you like rhubarb and you like them in a pie, it's a good day for you, right? It's a good day. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole, for that. So yes, talking about habits, and I'm just going to do some scribbling to warm up to get some of the shakiness out of my mind and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Sometimes when I scribble and talk, it frees up different things in my brain to happen. But yeah, so if uh, folks are like me and I don't think I'm alone in this, but when I get busy and I begin to recognize that I have a lot going on, a lot on my plate, I tend to what kind of, I get in this like mode where I realize I have to do something and I need to do something and I have to do it all and I go into mad to-do list phase. And I give myself these really rigid schedules and I set these, well, I don't say they're ridiculous, but I set really intense expectations up for myself. And then I wonder why I'm not enjoying anything as I go through it and do it. And when I take time to reflect, when I take time to sit back and not necessarily stop doing, but just to be still for a moment, that's when things start to click for me. And I have an opportunity to prioritize and make sense of all the stuff in my head. <laughs> And this is, I think, a pretty good representation of what's going on in my head some days. I have an opportunity to just ask myself what actually needs to be done today? What needs to be done in this moment? And I can begin to identify the things that actually I want to do, that I'm excited to do. And if I'm excited about doing something, it's more likely I'll do it. It's more likely I'll be able to see it through. I don't know if I'm alone in that. Feel free to let me know if you can also relate. Nicole says, I'm doing scratch art. Oh, fantastic. So again, thanks for letting me know what you're working on today, folks. Nicole is doing scratch art. Ow, oh, it's a unicorn that's black. And then you scratch off pieces with a tool and rainbow colors appeal. I love that. Oh, hello, Jennifer. Hey, Jen, how's it going? Jennifer Lindsay. 
Thanks so much for being here, Jennifer. Nicole, that reminds me of some of the work I was doing a few weeks ago with the oil pastels and the layering up. You can use that same tool, I think, that you are using for that scratch art once you're done to create your own works of art using uh, oil pastels to create those layers of color that you can scratch off and reveal. What is that called again? Scraffito? Is that the term? Somebody out there knows. So yes, so that, folks, is where I've been at lately. Trying to be gentle with myself as I take some time to be still, to listen and observe what I'm going through and figure out what it is that I want and what I want to put my mind to. It doesn't have to be a lot of time. Sometimes giving myself that permission helps speed things up because it prevents me from feeling aimless and spinning my wheels. And there's a lot to process out there right now. Right about now, in Ontario, for folks living in Ontario, we're getting ready to open things up again. And I'm sure there's a little bit of anxiety around that for some people. For others, maybe it's this moment of celebration and relief. But I don't think I'm alone in thinking, okay, this is a new transition. I need some time to deal with this. And let's see. Oh, and we're the gardening talk is back. So Joe saying, I wanted to let people know as the vegetable and fruit growing season is full now, full flow presently, I've now noticed on Facebook Marketplace that a lot of vegetable plants that were priced around three to five dollars per plant, now they are very cheap. Excellent or in a lot of cases, free. I have found many items free or very cheap. So if you need some free veggies, now is the time. So I guess, Joe, you're recommending Facebook Marketplace for that as well. That sounds amazing. That is never a bad thing. And there's still plenty of time to grow things. And of course, gardening is another thing that helps me ground down and feel relaxed. Okay, and Olivia, hello, Olivia. Olivia saying, I find that giving myself a time limit for doing tasks helps me. If I feel like I only have 15 minutes of energy to do chores, that's all I commit to. After 15 minutes, if I feel like I can do more, then I do. And that, of course, again, like a wonderful example of how we can work with ourselves to move forward, just checking in, checking in with ourselves in simple ways. And a lovely hello, Jay. Jay saying hi with a little sparkly heart. Oh, interesting. And Joe, we were talking about what term you use for that art form where you're scratching away things. And Joe saying, <laughs> I'm having trouble pronouncing things today. So bear with me, folks. If I'm laughing, it's not necessarily at you. It's at me and my brain trying to process. Joe says, so scratchiti is the term, I think. Combine graffiti and scratching. Interesting, Joe. Interesting. We'll have to look that up. Maybe a bit of fact checking there. Or not. I think when we're talking about art and how we do art, we can work with those terms and figure out what it is we're doing. Why not? And the time limit thing, there's so many things that can help. I know working with students sometimes, that's a, like quite a common conversation, how you organize your work time, how you prioritize what you need to work on so that you don't fall down the rabbit hole on one thing and then realize you don't have a lot of time for something else. But perhaps I'm talking about something even, just even a little more, like a little different than that. Let's see if I can, it's, Kind of realizing how do we decide what we want to dedicate our time to? How do we make those decisions? Because I think there are times and days where we have to do certain things. But I think there's also something to pay attention to when there's something we know we need to do and 
we just can't get excited about it. We just can't catch, you know, catch the spark with it. Is it that something else is in our brains that wants to give, you know, make its voice heard or something else that wants to be done? Hello, Joanna. So Joanna saying hello and everyone just joined. What are you doing? And love the comment about putting a time limit on things. Works, works expands to allotted, works expands to time allotted. Someone once said, and you're absolutely right. If you don't, yeah, you could give yourself five minutes to do something and do really well with five minutes. If you give yourself 10, you might do really well with 10 minutes. It does fill up time, doesn't it? Like the days off we give ourselves, but if we don't give ourselves boundaries or set those intentions with those days, they get away from us in really interesting and sometimes not exactly satisfying ways. But what am I doing? This is just me scribbling. So you could say that this is one way of looking at my brain sometimes. And I just scribbled and now I'm just filling in some of those spaces with color. And when I complete this, I'm going to move on to the next project, which I'm hoping everyone can help me with, which has a lot more to do with intention and examining the future of the living room project and what we want to get from it. What we want it to look like, maybe that's a that's a more accurate way of phrasing that, I think. There's again something that I sometimes uh, find myself, guilty isn't the right word, but it can get a lot, it can get pretty intense when you're in your own head all the time. And we've had each of us in our own ways has had more time in our heads this past year than we've had for a long time. For some of us, uh, with the privilege to stay home and work, we've had more. So it's an interesting, like an interesting opportunity to examine, you know, what's mine and what belongs to the community, especially with a project like this. When I'm not seeing people in person or connecting on a more consistent basis, I miss out. There's lots of things that I have to reconnect to and learn about in community once we're back out there doing outreach. And Nicole says, love the scribble art. Well, anyone and everyone can do this. That is something that I love about this process as well, especially if you're someone like me who has tremors. There are days where drawing straight or fine lines, well, it just doesn't want to happen. My body doesn't want to make it happen. So allowing it to do what it needs to do in the way it wants to do it can be really helpful. And oftentimes scribble art is the way I can kind of get around that inner critic in my brain and give myself permission to do it. And if you want to play with this even more, you can always use your non-dominant hand to do the scribble art. Just again, to escape, work around that inner critic and give yourself free reign. Not enough non-dominant art making in the world. And that is definitely something to slow you down in a good way. Yeah, even coloring in with my non-dominant hand. It's been a long time since I've done this. Helps me focus in on the details, on the process of how those details unfold. Kind of like doing an art puzzle as well if you do some scribble work like this. It's a simple thing in its own way, allowing the lines to be created, filling them in, each piece in with its own color. Sometimes you can take a step back as well, see if any images emerge for yourself. Out of this scribble, you might be able to see things that I'm not because I'm looking at it in tiny pieces right now. But if I were to stand back and say, what is the larger picture here? There might be something in this that I'm missing that I could draw out. And Olivia says, right now I'm drawing a coloring book as a kind of guest book for my virtual baby shower. Oh, happy, happy virtual baby shower. My family will each have a page to color and can write a note to our sweet Molly. Oh, how wonderful. Well, Molly, welcome. Almost time. Almost time to welcome Molly into the world. 
Congratulations, Olivia. Congratulations. And what a fantastic idea. And a virtual baby shower book too. There might be other folks who are interested in this process. If you are, Olivia, if there's any certain tools or platforms that you're using to do this, please let us know. So I'm imagining there's gotta be folks out there who wanna try this out for other things. Baby showers, birthday parties, weddings, ceremonies of life where we want to honor people that we've loved, people that we've lost. The little rituals, the creative rituals we create to mark the important moments in all of our lives. They look a little different these days, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Nicole saying, I'm using the back end of a cheap paintbrush to scratch your art. Oh, so it's not necessarily a, like a fancy tool you have in the kit. Sometimes the best tools are the ones we already have at hand, the things we use every day. The back of a paintbrush, love it. You can also paint with the back of a paintbrush. I love using it in stipple effect or to scratch things off with the oil pastels. I've used the back of a paintbrush as well if you don't have any other kind of tools. The end of a paintbrush works perfectly fine. All right. So I could quite happily sit here and work on this for the rest of this live stream. However, I'm feeling the need to move on to the next project because I really want everyone to contribute to it. Oh, yes, I will come back to this. But Olivia is saying, I am a little anxious about having a large gathering on Zoom, but I have reached out to family individually to celebrate and chat with them. That's, oh, what a beautiful, beautiful thing. So Zoom parties, Zoom gatherings. Yeah, larger ones are a little bit intimidating. I've uh, felt similarly. I think everyone who's watching right now, I don't know if there's anyone in the world right now who hasn't experienced a Zoom of some kind. I think, I think I feel quite confident in making that assumption. But keep me accountable here. If there's someone out there who hasn't used Zoom yet, I wanna meet you. Uh, Tanya saying, hello, Tanya. Hi, Mary, this is very cool. Hope you're doing well. Doing very well, how are you, Tanya? Tanya being someone who in the early days of the actual studio space gave us so much support, so much material, was responsible for creating a beautiful garden in a, a barrel out back, I believe. So, so, so beautiful. We weren't able to bring the whole barrel with us into storage, but we've snuck away some of the pieces from it. They will be making appearances as we move along through community in the mobile art studio. So Tanya, you are still with us. And Joe saying, Olivia has compiled an amazing book of pictures. It will be a bestseller. <laughs> I think if you can, I don't know if Olivia wants to actually turn it into a bestseller, but I have no doubt that everything about that book is beautiful. There's so much creativity in that family. Look at me, I can't help it. I said I was gonna move on. There's just something really compelling about doing a piece of this nature. Ooh. Absolutely, yep, I could get lost in this. And in a very good way, I think. <laughs> and Tanya saying, yep, that's me. <laughs> that's great. Absolutely. We've tried to, uh, there's so much that was in the studio space and every piece of art, every gesture, every mark, every object, every little secret bit of found art that was there. And sometimes even donations have, you know, we're bringing them along with us because each one reminds us of our community, of special people along the way who've given so much to the studio space. And 
we want to find a way to honor that and to incorporate it into the new vision of what the living room community art studio is going to be. And Carlos saying, oh, hello, Carlos saying, oh my glob, that art looks amazing. The beauty admits, oh, this is, oh, I like this, Carlos. The beauty admits the seeming chaos resonates for some reason. Loving this so much. Hope y'all are staying safe and warm. Oh, Carlos, thank you for that. And I hope you're staying safe and warm as well. Although I know not everyone likes the heat we're experiencing right now in Ontario. So hopefully if that's troublesome for you, I hope you're also enjoying and finding a way to stay cool. <laughs> and Nicole saying, this kit is very good for sparking creativity. There are only a few lines. So you basically, you basically just doodle in rainbow colors. Hmm, I like that. Yeah. Joe says, I was going through one of the external hard drives and when I went through my poetry and found your children's book uh, that is based on a poem I got published, which Nicole has mostly illustrated, so I have a special journey ahead. Joe, that sounds beautiful. And like, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like you're getting ready to self-publish or publish a children's book, help, like, illustrated with the help of your family. That is, wow, wow. There's so many extraordinary gifts out there. I learn so much every time I come out here. And for folks who are listening, perhaps, uh, wherever you are, I trust, I know you've got skills too. I know it. There's a lot of lived experience, a lot of creative wisdom out there in the community. And I, nothing thrills me more when I see people honor that and follow it through with, you know, certain projects or efforts or attempts. You know what? If nothing ever comes of it, and it's just that moment, that process that you experience with people that you care about, with yourself, who you should also care about. I'm not the boss of you, but I invite you to consider that as one of your primary, most important relationships in the world. What a beautiful thing. I'm getting really prescriptive today, aren't I, folks? I'm, I'm a bit of a bossy pants today. Yeah, you gotta, you know, keep me, keep me down to earth, folks. Keep me down to earth. And Olivia saying, <laughs> just about <laughs> publishing uh, that book of hers. Well, if I get rich and famous, I promise to share the wealth. <laughs> Fantastic. If you do, you know we're there. Small donation. We can write you a tax receipt. <laughs> and let's see. Oh, lots of hellos. Lots of love from folks in the community. If you're someone out there and you're new to the living room, or this is your first time saying hi, stepping out, joining the live stream, I also want to say welcome. It can seem a little bit intimidating sometimes when we're chatting in the stream and people, you know, there's lots of people we know from the community who were, who had an opportunity to experience the studio space. Uh, but there are lots of people on the live streams who we've met purely through the live streams as well. So those relationships build over time. You don't need to. If you don't want to build that relationship, that's totally fine. Or we can wait until we can build it in a different way. But I just want you to know that you're welcome here. And we do look forward to meeting you or seeing you again sometime in the future in whatever way suits you best. All right, this is, I swear, folks, I'm just, this is it. This is the last... I'm going to move on after this. I am going to move on. Even though this is really relaxing. <laughs> and so we've got scratch art out there. We've got some digital scrapbooking and virtual guest book, baby book, baby shower book stuff happening. What else are folks working on out there? What else do I need to know about? Are there any creative projects going on in your communities right now? That's also a good question as we begin to emerge from whatever this period is, safely, slowly taking our time, assessing our needs, advocating for ourselves, all of that. Is there anything folks want to share about what's going on in their communities, in their neighborhoods? 
Anything that we can look forward to? Oh, lovely. So Olivia's saying, if you are interested, I would love to share my book with you and maybe all the living room community members can each color a page. It might be a fun way to introduce new members as well. Olivia, that's a lovely idea. Yeah. Let's message. Oh, and okay. Am I pronouncing your name? This is, I'm saying, uh, Fredely Sebastian. I want to add a flourish in there and that's all on me. So please, if I'm pronouncing your names or your avatars in the wrong way, just let me know. I can take it. But Fredly Sebastian says, I'm doing hand embroidery. Lovely, some lovely stitch work going on there. Is it freestyle hand embroidery or is it from a kit or with a pattern that you've, that's been created for you or that you've created for yourself? Look how nosy I am. I'm definitely nosy. We have quite a lot of textile and fiber artists out there in the community. People who have, who have always worked in these traditions or who are recreating these traditions to express new things about themselves uh, and to make new marks in the art form. I'm, embroidery and textile work is one of those areas that I'm quite passionate about and I'm just keeping an eye on the, everything that's a, a moving forward and evolving in that culture and how so many things are being reclaimed uh, by people. It's it's really exciting for me. Maybe I'm a bit of a nerd in that way, but I find myself, oh, that's a pen. Oh, that's, you know what? I pulled it out. Let's use it. I'm super excited about stuff like that. Because again, embroidery, stitch work, all of those things haven't always been appreciated in the way they need to be. Uh, bead work, for example, as well. Things that are often considered women's work or folk. Oh, I have a very difficult and uncomfortable relationship with the the term folk art. Duh. Yeah, that's, I will leave you with that sound as a gesture of my, how I feel about it. Just like, ugh. like nothing, nothing wrong with ugh, folk art. I just, it, it just feels like such a simplifying, diminishing term for me when you say, you know, as opposed to fine art, right? I don't know. Yeah, just the, ugh. I give it that sound. Ugh. That's the relationship I have with it. You might have a different relationship and I'm happy to talk about it. Love to learn about what people think about those things. All I can do is speak my truth and stay accountable. Be prepared to pay for what my mouth buys. And Joe saying, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so Joe is saying, and I'm not sure if this is a joke or perhaps this is an event that happens or maybe it's a metaphor Joe says, beware of the black bear and cub in Curtis. Don't feed the bears. So, I was talking about community events. Is this perhaps something that has become a community event in Curtis? Strange to say, but growing up in different places, I know that sometimes wildlife can become a feature. Growing up, uh, summer spent, you know, with family in more rural areas, there were times where we'd go to the dump to look at the bears. Does anyone else have that experience in their pocket? It's really okay if you don't, but that reminds me. Oh, the, so Joe was saying, this happened two days ago for real, and Tanya's backing this up. I've been living under a rock, I apologize. Tanya's saying, there was a black bear cub spotted in Curtis. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. Isn't that... That, I mean, that's alarming in some ways. That is it normal for that to happen? And I hope the, I hope they're being protected, but indeed you don't want to get between a mama bear and her cub. And you certainly don't want to feed the animals, make them more reliant or teach them to be around us humans. We're complicated. I don't think it'll end well in that case. Wow, okay, so this is local news that I've missed out on. Thank you for keeping me in the loop. I do remember a few years ago in Oshawa when there was uh, a stag deer that was running through the downtown and quite distraught. And I would say it was causing chaos, but it, it wasn't. It was just afraid doing its thing. Uh, but it did cause a lot of damage in the end. It ended up going through the storefront the window of a... A bar, I think, in downtown Oshawa. It's an, another talking about interesting and complicated relationships. The relationship we have with 
our wildlife, our nature, the land we sit on is another one of those things. And Carlos saying, uh, I guess it's kind of normal. I mean, they were here way before we encroached upon their neighborhood. Right? Right, Carlos? I agree. Here's hoping all bears and all humans are okay. I hope so as well. And Joe, sort of following up on that, says, this is what happens when we build too much around and force the wildlife into the residential. Absolutely. And Tanya, oh yes, remembers that deer incident as well. Yes, the deer jumped through the atria front window. Yeah, intense, intense. And I know sometimes when bears, again, with other wild creatures like that, when they come into residential areas, it might often signal that their normal or regular food sources are not as abundant as they are. And that, I can't help but think, has something to do with development and humans, again, kind of encroaching upon natural territories and natural food sources for those creatures. So that's intense. Oh, well, I hope, yeah, I hope all the bears and all the deer are okay and all the humans as well. Uh, don't feed the bears. Yep, I agree with Joe. And Joe says, I must go, everyone. Have a beautiful day. And you have a beautiful day too, Joe. Thank you so much for joining us and keeping me in the know. I gotta look that up afterwards and learn a little bit more. Oh, poor bear and poor cub. I can only imagine that's gotta be scary. Okay, and I did say I was gonna move on to the main project, didn't I? Okay, folks, this is it for real. I was going to work on this. I just fell in love with the pen and the texture that the pen was giving. Hello, Ashley. How you doing? And Ashley saying, hi, love the drawing. Thank you. It started from a scribble and I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I think it's a way of grounding for myself and a slight representation of what goes on in my brain sometimes when there's just so much stuff. But eventually I do want to fill this up with color. Maybe I'll keep working on it tonight, but I will move on to the next part of the project now. Right? When you fall in love with what you're doing, it's never a bad thing. And Nicole saying, today I was walking the dog and a kid with a super soaker was outside. It was so hot, I would have been happy if he'd sprayed me. <laughs> I do, I have to admit, I have that temptation when I'm walking uh, Alice, Alice the dog, and I see someone has a sprinkler on, and I do. There's a part of my brain that just says, go on, run through their sprinkler. They don't care, but then they might, they might care. They might care if they saw some strange lady jumping through their sprinkler and, and I don't know how Alice feels. Alice hates water. Yeah. Well, but I hear you. I hear you. All right, folks, I need your help. So I need help of everyone who knows the studio. I need the help of everyone who doesn't know the studio. I would like to create a bit of an intention work here for the new project. So as many of you know, uh, we are transitioning from a storefront studio based art hive into a mobile art hive using a bus. It won't be a bus that people can get on. It will more be like uh, we're describing it as, and forgive me if you've heard this a million times before, a really quirky food truck and place making machine. But instead of selling tacos, we're going to be creating, providing opportunities for creative arts experiences for community, uh, passing out workshop kits and supplies to those who need them, having events and hello, Sandra, and creating space by the mobile art studio, wherever we might go in whatever neighborhood or community we might be in for people to come together and connect if only for a brief moment or when it's safer to do so for longer moments, afternoons maybe, or days. Uh, we're super excited. And now Ashley says, <laughs> what, no tacos? Well, you know, in the past there have been people at the studio who've crocheted tacos before. So I wouldn't cross that off the list. And you know what? If, if we have, if another, like if a food truck wants to join us, I wouldn't say no to that, right? All possibilities, all possibilities are out there. But yes, this, today, I started working on a piece in our Tuesday morning virtual art hive Zoom group that we have, where I wanted to, uh, it started out just creating a new image to post on Facebook as a banner, something just to let people know, just to remind them, yeah, it's coming, the bus is happening. Don't worry, it may take time, but it's happening. And I just couldn't build it out. 
I had an idea of what I wanted, kind of colorful rays of collage and things shining out from the bus, which, and this is our bus in its pre-converted form, its pre-painted form. Uh, but I just couldn't do it. I needed more. And I realized, again, part of this intention process, as I was moving forward, what was missing was the community and the thoughts and the dreams and the desires of what people in the community hoped for this project. And I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, what do you want it to do? What kind of events you want it to, you know, go to? What I was thinking about was the things that matter to you in an art hive, the things that matter to you in creative community. And I want to build in those intentions with everyone right from the very beginning. So I will create rays coming out from this bus, but I kind of want each ray to represent or signify one of those, those things, those dreams, uh, those intentions, so that we can work together and I can, I can be mindful of it as I move forward of it. And if we stray from it or if we want to create something new, we can always do that and we can always sort of, you know, bring ourselves back to those core ideas, those principles. But I can't do this alone. So I'm inviting you folks during this live stream. We can keep the chat going about everything. But if you have things that you want to share, thoughts, dreams, words that are important to you that uh, speak to what an art hive should be, what a community arts engagement project might be, social arts practice project might be, public practice art therapy. Like there's so many ways of looking at this and there's so many things that art hives do. But if you have something that you'd like to share, please put it in the comments or you can send me an email at info at livingroomcommunityartstudio.org. Longest email in the world, I'm so sorry. But let me know. And you can think about it too. It doesn't have to happen right now. It doesn't have to happen today, but let's start. And here we go. Ashley, thank you. Inclusive. Um, and Sandra saying, you need a picture of the studio on the bus saying we're on the move. <laughs> you know what? I will do more of that in the weeks to come. Okay, it's happening. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, keep it coming, folks. I'm actually going to write some of this down. So uh, don't forget. So we have inclusive we have communication and both of those are so important inclusion is a really interesting uh, idea because i think it's the one it's a word we use all the time but we don't often think about what it means uh, i'm going to use colored markers for this because that black pen is just a little too thin so let's why not get col colorful here and what do we mean when we talk about inclusion what do we mean when we say we want to be inclusive? Because I think that does ask us ourselves, each one of us to say, hmm, what is, who's not a part of the picture? Who's not? Inspiration, love it. Coming from Nicole. That's always a really interesting question to ask. Who's not a part of this conversation? Why aren't they a part of this conversation? Uh, what responsibility do we bear in that? Inventive. And I saw yours too, Carlos, inventive from Wendy, safe mobile space, says Carlos. And that's another great conversation. What does safe mean? What is safety? Embrace imagination from Joanna. This feels like it could become a poem as well. And I love the idea of embracing imagination. Thank you, Joanna, because I feel like Again, we talk about imagination all the time, but we don't always make space for it. I think you need a safe space for imagination to really unfold itself in a way, in like a, a positive way, a meaningful way. And Sandra says healing, healing. And if you want to elaborate on these thoughts, please do. I'm going to double line that one. And healing is always a really interesting thing in a, like a mobile art studio or a art hive in general, because I think it's trusting that we all have the wisdom and knowledge to be of support, to walk alongside one another as we heal. We have a lot of knowledge within ourselves already, but there's resources out there that can be available. How do we, oh my goodness, this is so great. How do we make sure those resources are available for folks when full of heart, 
with art there, says Carlos. Nicole says accessible. So we've had this question come up, the accessibility question. And actually, you know what? I need to reach out to the accessible, the accessibility committee in uh, Oshawa and maybe others as well. Because accessibility is one of those terms that if we used the term five years ago, that meant something very different than what it means today. Um, and then this room is a conversation I was just having with the board of a theater company that I sit on called Driftwood Theater. Uh, it was, yeah, Richard Lee bring, brought that point up. Like accessibility is something that at one time was something very simple. Now it's much like it's really, we're really waking up into this process of recognizing what is accessibility? Who are we talking about? And how do we make it accessible? Can we even make it accessible? And Ashley is saying for inclusion, this is great, thank you for expanding. Uh, what I mean is accepting those for where they are, who they are, and where they are at. Yes, okay, I get it. And Nicole saying meaning, meaning. So the, the inclusion piece is about meeting people where they're at. And I, I think that it has a conversation that we have with each of ourselves about, you know, checking our assumptions, seeking clarification, knowing what our expectations are and being able to dialogue with ourselves about how flexible are those expectations and, and with meaning, meaning, that's a really interesting one. Nicole, if you want to share a little bit more about meaning, I love these. These are all going to be rays coming out from the bus. And now suddenly I'm realizing that I don't, I need more than an hour and a half for this project with you. I need about, uh, I need about seven hours. Can everyone stay for seven hours in this live stream? Yeah, that okay? I don't think so. I don't think Alice will need her walk before then, but I could. Meaning, yeah. So with meaning, so meaning, 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 that comes back to me to the idea of intention too. Because something that I would like from the mobile art studio that we couldn't always do with the brick and mortar studio was invite people into very specific dialogues wherever we go. And that can be based on the communities that we in, it can come from the community. Because what is meaning? Who does it come from? How is it made? There's meaning for ourselves individually, but then there's also that process of engaging and allowing ourselves to be moved and changed by what we're experiencing, what we're learning about the people we're connecting with. Um, so I feel like when we talk about meaning, maybe there's something in that as well. Allowing ourselves to grow, to learn, to be affected. And maybe there'll be opportunities in every community we visit to develop that. Like maybe we, um, every day we go out into the community or every week we're out, maybe there is a theme or a question we're asking everyone we're connecting to. Maybe it comes from things like this. Maybe it, it originates through conversations like this that we have. Okay, this is really beautiful. So keep those things coming. They can be stories, they can be, you know, and all of these are lovely and beautiful. I think I'd also like to add joy to this list. Hello, let's see. I'm gonna add joy. Because in the midst of all of these wonderful things, I think it's also important to have fun, right? Because if we're not having fun, I think something's wrong. Not wrong in an irredeemable way. And joy isn't always effortless and silly. Joy can sometimes come from a very meaningful place. Joy can sometimes come out of difficult, difficult conversations. Breathe, Mary. Watercolor. I'm going to start this with some watercolor. And here's the bus over here. I put the work and I put the bus where it can be seen. What to do when you didn't give yourself enough water for watercolor before you sat down in the live stream. These are all fantastic things. So fantastic. Thank you. 
And maybe I'll leave that question open in the show and tell post that we do after this as well. Because even I think each one of these can be impact in so many ways, like safety again. In the studio space, it was a little easier to have conversations about safety because we had a door. Literally, there was a gate, you know, that people had to pass through if they wanted to participate in the art hive. So we could have conversations about accountability. We could have conversations to let people know what to expect when they engaged with us. The mobile art studio will present a different challenge. It'll be a little more, I think we can still have those conversations, but I'm thinking of, it'll be closer. It might look closer to what happens when we're at an event in the community. All right. And accessibility, how do we ensure in certain ways it'll be more accessible than ever? Because when we go into communities, you know, we're doing part of that work. We're bridging part of that traveling. We can be there for people to investigate when they feel ready. At their own pace, in their own time. I think I mean, this falls back into safety as well. I mean, that's another conversation too. How do we, the relationships that we'll be building with the mobile art studio project will probably take time. I'm excited. I'm super, super, super excited. So as I'm moving, this is this exercise kind of reminds me of something that I did long, long ago in one of our very first live streams where I did a gratitude wheel, like a sun with rays coming out where I was able to write down all the things I was grateful for and reflect on that process. This is similar to that. Oh, coffee. Ha <laughs> ha Almost washed the paintbrush off in the coffee. Except that it's... This is more like a contract, isn't it? Do any of you make contracts with yourself? Have you ever done that? If you haven't, I totally recommend doing so. The word contract is kind of icky and scary and comes along with all sorts of weirdness. But if you like, maybe, maybe the contract is not the right term, like a vow, perhaps creating, taking the time to sit down and reflect on what do I want in my life? And am I in a place where I can commit to pursuing certain things or at least to help myself become aware of what I'm committing to? Every once in a while, it's a beautiful thing. Sit down and make a contract with yourself. Your heart's desires, your dreams, I suppose it could be related to a vision board in some ways, the things you want to have in your life that you want to make space for, room for, and just kind of putting that intention out there. And the one thing I'll invite you to do if you do that, and the one thing I'm trying to do here with this project I want to do it wholeheartedly. I want to do it with all of my heart. <laughs> I 
Because I do believe if something is entered into wholeheartedly, that the possibility and the potential for something truly, what, exciting, extraordinary, impactful will come out of it. And again, I'll use you, I'll use the community as my guide. do my best to remain in constant, well, maybe not constant, but in conversation with you, in dialogue with you, be open to the feedback. The good, the bad, the weird, all of it's constructive. And I don't think there are any wrong ideas or wrong feelings out there. And everything may not be able to manifest when we want it to, or as quickly as we want it to. The bus itself I was hoping would be in conversion right now. I'm really hopeful that, I was so hopeful that we'd have it on the road by July, in July, and I'm not so sure if we might have to pass that deadline as well. Ooh, come here, color. What color do I want? Ooh, la, 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 la. This one. But it will happen when it happens. And part of that is the intention that we've all put into creating it and making it possible, I suppose. All right. Having a basis here for this. And folks, if you're tuning in right now and you're wondering what's happening, first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for dropping by and saying hi. We're working on creating some intentions for the studio project, what we want from it moving forward, what we'd like to contribute to how we move, literally how we move through the world, how we move from community to community. And safe, like all of these things, in, what do we have so far? We have inclusive, we want this mobile art studio to be inclusive. Communication is important. Inspiration is important. We want it to be inventive. We want it to be safe embracing imagination. So wherever it goes, we want to take that quality with us of encouraging people and inviting people to embrace imagination, even explore what imagination means. We want it to be healing and provide experiences, not where we heal people or fix people. The living room or any art hive can't do that. Any person can't do that. But where we provide spaces and opportunities for people to use art and creative selves of expression to discover and learn how they can take care of one another and themselves, how they can heal, because, you know, that's such an important part of using your voice and expressing yourself in the world. If you're not feeling safe, if you're not feeling that you can be yourself, it's very difficult to do any of these things. It's very difficult to make art, um, although absolutely possible. And sometimes that's what gets us through, isn't it? And then when we find that place where we feel free, and can look back on perspective with many of the difficult things we've been through, the healing process can continue. But anyways, uh, we want this bus to be full of heart and art, and I will do my darndest to make sure that is the case. Uh, we want it to be accessible. So someone asked in the comments uh, on Instagram, I believe, would it be accessible and physically accessible the only people who can come on the bus will be staff and volunteers. So there will be barriers there. And I'm not sure how to address those barriers yet. Of course, we'll always, we'll do what we've always done, what many art hives do, because we often make use of spaces that are imperfect. And often that means they're not accessible. We'll use our human resources to make the process as accessible as possible. And the studio space that we had, that meant rearranging furniture if we needed to. Oh my goodness, there's so many other things here that I'm missing. You know what, guys? I forgot to scroll down. Welcoming! Sharing! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Forgive me. Here we go. Here I was riffing and exploring. All of this helps. Welcoming, absolutely. Sharing. And yes, I have to use different colored markers to do this. Sharing storytelling. Our stories matter. And that is, that's what art is, isn't it? It's a story that we tell. 
It's a story. We're telling stories when we express ourselves. Oh, ho, ho. filling need. That's an interesting one. Filling need. Okay. Welcoming to new members that may be walking by the mobile studio, making sure people feel comfortable asking us about the studio and joining us. And that's one way that welcoming and that links back to folks who are familiar with the art hive concepts of radical hospitality. So I'm going to do it. I'll just underline that welcoming there and adaptable. Wendy, nice. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing the mobile studio in the first place, why we've chosen to move in that direction. Hopefully we'll have the flexibility to be spontaneous, to respond, to be, to be responsive. That's so adaptable belonging. Nice one, Nicole. And I get just like uh, friendly that the storytelling. Yes, I think there's a large, I just have to go back to that to acknowledge that and thank you for bringing that up because I feel like there's something about this project that is all about when we talk about placemaking, I think we're also talking about story enabling. That sounds really scientific. So there's got to be a better word for it. But I think that's what this project is about. It's about instead of asking people to come to us to do their thing, we're learning, we're growing. It feels like there's, we're moving and we're moving to people to meet them where they're at. So there's something in that that feels like it's all about uh, I don't know, stories, stories. I can't, oh, it's there. I've got to think on that. I've got to think on that. Um, Barb says friendship. Yeah. And gratitude. And the gratitude for me is already there. It's here right now. But an interesting thing, can we take that? Is that a, something we can take into communities? Is that something we can invite people to explore and to reflect on? And Ashley, again, coming back to that conversation about accessibility, uh, it's not just about getting there, but it's also things like being able to sit at tables if they're unable, yep, to transfer from a device you might have set up. Uh, for those who can't be in the sun, how do you keep those people safe if they want to be involved? Accessibility is a big word and has so many meanings. Ha, here's lots of high fives coming your way. High fives, tens, absolutely. And that's uh, one thing we're considering as we create our table that will hook on to the bus. Um, and we have an awning that will be big enough and secure enough that will provide shade for people who want to spend time there. Not just a little wee one, but something substantial. Uh, we want to have tables where people can pull up. So we're thinking about heights of motorized wheelchairs. We're talking about the surfaces that we might be parking on. Sometimes we'll have a parking lot. Sometimes we'll be in a park. Those, those levels, those grounds are going to be different. So how can we create something that is accommodating to everyone who moves through that? Can we be in places always where there's level ground? Can we put mats on the ground? that wheelchairs can move on and move around on a little more freely. Uh, one of our community members, Lisa Hart, was a huge part of helping me learn about those things. I think a few years ago, uh, there was a beach project where they rolled out, the Accessibility Connected Committee created or got funding to uh, have mats that they could roll out into the water so that people could take their wheelchairs onto the sand and into the water. And normally that was something that couldn't happen with any ease or without major assistance. It's, you know, again, not a perfect solution, but it's a way to move forward. And I think we can be creative with that. And hello, Momo. Momo says, wonderful living room community, lovely colors, Mary. Thank you, Momo. And for everyone who might be tuning in now, what are things that you want and hope the Living Room Mobile Art Studio project can be. We're talking about intention today. Each ray here is an intention that this will sit at the center of, <laughs> and I need community to make this happen. So keep those suggestions coming. What are the things that you want this project to carry forward out into community? The things, the intentions, the ideas, the thoughts that will keep us accountable, that will help remind me of what we need, help shake me out of ruts when I get stuck, you know, when I revisit this and I look at this list and I'm sure it will evolve and continue evolving, I'm counting on it. What are the things that will help me remember what this project is about? If you have something that you want to share, please do. We've had so many amazing suggestions. 
and, and great conversations emerging from it. Nicole saying, I accidentally hit my unicorn with my nail and now there's a random line down the middle of it. Well, hey, maybe it's a zebra unicorn now. Is that what you mean? I'm not sure. Maybe it's a happy accident. Something can be created from it. And Wendy saying, oh, speaking of contracts, I have made a contract with myself many times. As a contract, it can be modified as needed. Of course it can. Why wasn't I thinking about that? Contracts with self can be so powerful. I remember the first time I did it, uh, I did one was, and it's a strange thing to say, to consider that I hadn't done one before. Uh, it was with a nurse, a nurse practitioner when I was going through a very, very difficult time. And part of it was all about planning and what we wanted to come out from that experience that was very difficult. Uh, and, ex you know, outside of the fact that it was an extraordinarily difficult time for me, what I took away from that process was I'd never taken the time to consider that, to actually make choices in that way for myself on that level. And it took something very difficult happening to me to help me realize that process, that I can do that. I don't have to wait for somebody else. I don't have to wait for a wonderful or difficult experience. I can actually say, this is how I'd like to see things unfold for myself. And these are some things I can do and ask for to help that happen. And it helps me to be mindful. It helps me to move through those difficult experiences with more grace. It helps me move through every day knowing that I can create purpose for myself. This goes back to storytelling. I'm the author of my own story, so what kind of story do I want to tell? Yep, yep, yep. Um, Carlos saying, ooh, interesting. When doing youth groups, we never used to have group contracts, although we were told by big bosses, <laughs> the big, those big bosses, uh, that we should use that term. I tried using the term group agreements instead, as there was less pressure and it was a place with shared power. Yeah, I love that. I love that. It's an agreement with self. So I try to use the term self-agreement when I do that for me, so it means a little less pressure, if that makes sense. It totally makes sense, Carlos. And thank you folks for letting me connect and uh, taking time to go through this. I'm having so much fun today. I'm glad everyone can stay for seven hours. I'm just joking. For folks who are listening and not watching, I'm, I'm just joking. I'm not going to be here for seven hours, even though I probably could be. Uh, and Momo yeah, says, group agreements. I like that. Absolutely. And Prin saying, hello. Hello, Prin. How are you doing? How are you? What you working on? I've been seeing some lovely stuff on Instagram. I gotta, gotta get off my butt and get me some of those beautiful stickers you're working on. Anyways, um, <laughs> Carlos saying good to see you, and Prince saying this all sounds very exciting. Well, it feels exciting, it feels hopeful. And I think the last few weeks, and maybe, you know, if you've felt this too, let me know, but it's, you know, sometimes there are things, it's not always easy to feel hope, and I, I think that sometimes I can get stuck in that place. Uh, and then I remind myself, oh, wait, wait, you can make choices, you can do things, you can take action. There's always hope as long as you have the ability to make a choice. And even then, even, you know, for those folks who find themselves in extraordinary situations where they may not have that wonderful, wonderful thing, because that's what freedom really is, the ability to make choices, to take action without fear, without judgment, or the capacity to process and deal with that judgment. Um, there's always something you can take action on. There's always some choice you can make for yourself and honor yourself with. Always something. And I'm almost saying seven hours, okay, let me move some things around. <laughs> uh, we've thought about that actually as a fundraiser in the past, doing like a 24 hour art hive thing. Actually, Momo, hmm, and any other Art Hive people that might be listening, what about that as a fundraiser for all of us? Having a 24 hour artathon, a 24 hour virtual Art Hive. Do you think we could do that? Okay, I'm going to put a pin in that thought, move it to the side, 
because I think it's actually possible we could do that, right? Oh, and Barb coming back to the list. Let me grab a marker here. So we're getting thoughts and ideas of intentions we want to put into the mobile art studio as we move forward. Uh, feel free to share what you want from this project, what you hope for this project, the things, the essences, um, the words or themes that you want us to hope for us to carry forward because it'll keep me accountable. And Barb says, this is all beautiful. Barb says cooperation. Thank you. Cooperation, believe, believe, being able to believe. Valued. How important is that? That we can find a way with that sense, that radical hospitality, with that honest communication and dialogue, by the choices we make, the gestures we do, how we move, model behaviors for everyone, that we can pass along that feeling, help people understand how valuable they are, how valued they are, and brave. Okay. Oh my goodness. This is a, this is a list effort. And yeah, you're right. I think there's something in effort. Uh, we talk about things being effortless, but I think there's a little bit of a kind of a falsehood that comes along with that. Not a falsehood, but it's a little bit of a disguise because I think things that look effortless often have so much work and devotion and dedication and practice put into them. So let's see. Effort, harmony, Harmony is a really interesting thing. It acknowledges difference, doesn't it? We're not all the same. How can we find harmony with all our viewpoints, with all our practices, with all our passions, our itchy, sore spaces, our celebrations? Is there a way to find harmony and rhythm through that? Positive and, oh, give me a color, special. I love that, Barb. Thank you. And Ashley's saying, I love how you use your watercolors. Always amazes me. For Ashley, thank you for that. I appreciate that. I'm going to say, I'm going to really thank you. I have to practice saying thank you because it's difficult to accept compliments sometimes. Thank you. <sighs> that was hard. But, like following it with a but, I love watercolors, I love playing with them, especially when I'm not thinking about it too much. And I think that's something, I invite everyone to try that. If you've got watercolors at home, just try playing and throwing color on the page lots of different ways without thinking too much about it. Tell that inner critic to take a back seat and see what happens. But I appreciate that so much. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> oh, this, oh, did Momo say seven? Okay, let's see. The seven hours I won't take you up with, but I am hoping. Oh, as Momo says, 24 hour artathon, I'm in. Excellent. I think we can do this. And Momo, absolutely. Oh, folks, this fundraiser is happening. Momo says, how about also different languages at different times? Excellent. Absolutely, we have to have that. And maybe we can even work in some translation shifts for folks so that it can still be open and accessible and we can experience hearing and learning different languages. Um, and Momo is already asking for the graveyard shift. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Maybe this will be a 48 hour fundraiser. We have so many amazing archives out there. It wouldn't surprise me if that we needed 48 hours instead of 24. Oh, and Olivia, this is nice. Okay, this is a good one. Consider it. Consider it as a word for the mobile studio of people's feelings, differences, abilities, etc. And considering means also learning, learning so that we can anticipate, learning, not feeling embarrassed about, oh, what? Not feeling embarrassed about learning, which reminds me, I feel like there's something there. I want to use the word uh, non-judgmental, but sometimes you need to make judgment calls in order to maintain safety. So what is a word? Oh, is there a word? Let's see. Let's see, there's maybe a, a word about that to, I mean, maybe that's part of welcoming and accepting that 
people feel safe to fail, safe to take mistakes. I'm going to put down imperfect and add that to the list because permission, permission to be imperfect. So I'll put permission and maybe I'll also add curious. Yeah. And Carlos, so Momo, you won't be alone in the graveyard shift. Uh, Carlos will be right there with you. I think there's a few folks out in the community and perhaps this would work well even for some of our international archives or international community members. Of course, it's 24 hours for some folks. That'll be the middle of the day. So it might work out just perfectly or imperfectly perfectly. And Barb is saying, yeah, a multicultural 24 hour archive. Wow, beautiful. I don't think it's just the coffee speaking. I think that's a, I think that can be a, that can be something. I, and my, yeah, I have to remember, I have to pay for what my mouth buys. Uh, but I think that can be something for archives everywhere. Fundraising and raising awareness is a, can be a really challenging thing, but perhaps that's a really fun way to engage people and uh, raise awareness about what we do, but also maybe help some archives, especially after this last year, which has been so difficult for so many. I feel incredibly grateful that I live in a province that's had funding that I can apply for so that we can do weird and wonderful things like the Mobile Art Studio Project. Oh, there's a word there. Is that Olivia? Olivia. How did I miss that one? And see folks, there is a perfect example of why community brain, art hive brain is the best. Engaging. Engaging. And I'm gonna add, that reminded me for some reason, uh, observant. Observe and listening. I think those two things. Yeah, I think Barb, you're right as well. Understanding instead of non judgmental. Do we have understanding here yet? Which is part of observant and listening. I can't help but feel understand, judge not. And Prince says, thanks, Mary. The sticker packs are selling really well. That I better get my order in soon. Oh, folks, this is lovely. Yeah, folks, if you haven't uh, checked out Curve 5 on Instagram, I definitely recommend doing so. Some really cool stickers. There's been stickers in the air recently this week. I don't know if folks saw Andres is selling some stickers, uh, selling to raise money for, uh, what is it, the IRSSS. So... What do those letters stand for right now? I know the money goes towards uh, the Indigenous Reconciliation Society something. It's services to work within Indigenous communities, with especially with people who've been impacted by the residential schools, the 60s baby scoops, things like that, to help people connect, to provide resources within the community, from the community, for everyone. If you haven't had a, check, a chance to check out that as well, check out Zombie Art Squad on Instagram to learn more about those stickers. He was making them with us on uh, Tuesday morning in our virtual art hive. Um, and another way to channel that anger, that those feelings of hopelessness sometimes in making something that can have an impact, that can in some small way make a small change because every change, every small contribution helps. But Barb, thank you. Understanding instead of non-judgmental, perfect. So, folks, I love this. As you're thinking, as you're reflecting, please uh, feel free to keep these, the suggestions coming through. I'll post it uh, in the show and tell post and I'll ask so you can continue making suggestions there. And I'll just work on this picture throughout the next week because I, I feel like there's so much here and I want it to be represented here. I'm going to take my time with this as a visual meditation 
on what I want the mobile art studio to be. Uh, because oftentimes I don't think I use art enough <laughs> to process things, to explore things, to plan. That might sound weird to folks out there, but it's easy to get caught up in kind of the corporate way of doing things, of making lists and things like that. But again, the same way that we reframe the idea of contracts into self-agreements, uh, I want to use art to represent and map out what we want from this art studio. Why not? And Carlos saying, I still have my eyeballs and tooth stickers print. Oh, see, I got it. Okay, after this, after my walk with Alice, I'm going to check these out. Uh, and I love them so much. Prin Marshall makes amazing, amazing stuff. An extraordinary artist. I also have finally put the witch doctor pic you created in a frame. <gasps> Such a huge fan of your art and of you as a chum and human. Absolutely. We got a good community going on here, folks. Such a great one. Every day, honored, honored to be a part of this. Even when things are difficult and I, because I do have days where I love humans and I love community and I have days where I don't. Experiences like this help get me through. And I think it's okay to hold both those things, to hold both those things in our hands at once and find balance with those things. Oh, Olivia with one more, ch one more thing here. Let's see what we got. Passionate and enthusiastic. Thank you. Can't believe we don't have passion on this list yet. So passionate. And I am a big believer that without passion, nothing much happens. So I think passion is so important to a project and enthusiastic. A genuine enthusiasm about the project, but also about the communities we're engaging with, about learning about the people we're engaging with. And we'll continue with virtual community engagement as well, because I'm having such a wonderful time learning. And over the past year, I've really, you know, there's so much about what I've learned about myself and what I've learned about what I want and hope to sort of shepherd forward in the community. Uh, with the community has come from the community here and the communities abroad, the communities of other art hives and art hive facilitators and people connected with those organizations. It's just a wonderful reminder of what happens when we open the door or open the window to welcome in new thoughts and new ideas, even though sometimes it's really scary. Oh, sometimes it's really scary and it can feel very vulnerable. But this past year you have, all of you have helped affirm that belief that we are stronger knowing that we are out there stronger when we listen to one another stronger when we're together maybe but we haven't we're not always together i don't think we always need to be together but i think it's important to recognize one another to acknowledge one another beautiful words beautiful words everyone uh as much as i want to continue going on for seven hours and I'm serious about that 24 hour art hive fundraiser. You know I am. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's definitely, definitely got legs. Let me center this here so we can all appreciate what we've created. And I want to read out these words too, just so we can get back to, as we look at this image, what we're hoping for it. Um, oh, f oh man, guys, look what I did. Ashley just pointed this out. <laughs> I did it. The one thing that I've managed not to do in over a year and a half of live streaming, I've washed my paintbrush in my coffee. Oh boy. That is the most hilarious thing ever. And uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna take a, no, I can't take a picture because I don't know where my phone is. All right, I'm gonna put that aside. I'll take a picture of it after. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to read out all the words that we have with this project. So the things, the intentions that we have for this project. On the list we have what we want for this to be inclusive, 
Communication is an important part. Inspiration, inventive, safe, embrace imagination, healing, full of heart, and the heart is with art in big capital laughters. Uh, laughter, Barb, you're right. That's another one to add to the list. Um, <laughs> accessible, meaning, joy, welcoming, sharing, storytelling, permission, curiosity, engaging, feeling need, adaptable, belonging, understanding, friendship, gratitude, passion, cooperation, believing, valued, observant, brave, listening, effort, enthusiastic, harmony, positive, special, considerate, and the last thing on the list just by accident, <laughs> and I think it fits rather well for my paintbrush in the coffee mug moment, imperfect, always leaving space for what is possible. And as long as we're trying our damnedest to, if, as long as we're stuck on this idea of perfection, it's really hard to innovate and grow and change and make those discoveries that can only happen through stumbling onto them. <sighs> and it's good to know as people laugh. And thank you for taking a screenshot, Momo. <laughs> it's so good to know that I'm not the only one who's done that. And now the question is like, do I keep drinking it? Just a touch of paint. You know what? It's not so bad. It's not so bad, folks. I definitely, like, I don't recommend it. I don't suggest you do this safety first, but, um, yeah, it's not so bad. <laughs> Everyone, I can't thank you enough for uh, walking alongside me this afternoon, uh, participating and sharing your, what you're working on, sharing where you're at, sharing your art, sharing your heart as always. Uh, it's been a beautiful afternoon and you've helped me understand and focus in a little bit more on what I want for this project moving forward, which has helped me become unstuck a little bit because I get focused on all the nuts and bolts <laughs> and I think they're common. Living reckless. Yeah, Fridley. 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 I will have to learn how to pronounce that. I am so sorry. Um, Yep, that's it. Living recklessly. That's as reckless as I get, to be honest with you, but I'm proud to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yes, all of this has helped me kind of zero in on what's really important about this project. Yes, it's taking longer than I wanted to, you know, get out there into the community. Yes, some days it's really hard to imagine it ever coming to fruition, but we're on that journey together. And I think as long as I keep those things, those ideas, those words, those intentions at the center of this project, maybe even keep them in front of me, leading me forward, I think everything's going to be okay. So thank you so very much for that, everyone. Uh, you've made my day. And uh, if you have any other thoughts that you'd like to add to this list, please do. I'm going to spend some time working on that picture, adding them in, designing, I don't know, figuring out how they fit into all of those rays of what I imagine are light. And light's another word I can add to the list, actually. Lightness about things. Um, we can deal with very difficult things in very in serious ways, but with a kind of lightness that helps us manage them. Um, that's a part of the process too, isn't it? Anyways, there's so much, uh, possibility and potential out there. Thank you for being here. Thank you for laughing with me. Thank you for making with me. And I guess until we can connect and create with one another again in person, I look forward to creating and connecting with you right here online and continuing this conversation. And thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you are and everything you do in community for yourself, for your loved ones. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. And I'll see you all again real soon. <laughs> Bye, everyone. And Momo, let's talk about that 24-hour fundraiser. <gasps> Bye, folks. <laughs>